Nina Setjes, owner and operator of Luna Float, is our next presenter. Through starting her business, Nina has brought deep relaxation flotation therapy to Chilliwack. In the few short years since its founding, Luna Float has been recognized as one of the best day spas in town and has been named Aboriginal Business of the Year. Nina holds a bachelor degree from UFE in Business Administration with concentrations in finance and accounting. She is president of the Stalo Business Association and has worked for many years as a financial, financial literacy trainer. Born and raised in Chilliwack, her given name is Pulamaya. Her indigenous background is from Shehelis. Her mother is Bonnie Olson, Pulam Quinn. Her grandfather is Ed Leon Jr. And her great grandfather is Ed Leon Sr. Pulam, from which her name is derived. Pulamaya, please. Thank you. So I'm really excited to share my passion today with you, which just happens to be lying naked in the dark um, on about a foot of water. This is also known as floating, float therapy, or sensory deprivation. And I'm so passionate about it that I left my job of 10 years working at that credit union uh, to open the first and only float center in Chilliwack. And we've been open for three years now. Uh, so it wasn't following my dreams, love at first float, um, but this is where the story begins. So I was in my mid-20s. I should have been relatively healthy, but I was getting bombarded with sicknesses. Um, I had rubella, shingles. Um, I was de-stressing by playing roller derby. Fun fact, I <laughs> helped uh, form the roller derby league here in Chilliwack a while back as well. So I was kicking and fighting my way through roller derby to t try to de-stress, and it wasn't working. I had a doctor tell me that I needed to be on heart medication and actually um, have a pacemaker put in. But this would ruin my roller derby career. So I got a second opinion. I went to another doctor, and she asked a lot of really good questions, and I found out that I have a general anxiety disorder um, and that I had chronic stress. And this was actually wiping my immune system out and was part of the reason I was getting sick all the time. And so I had to shift my thinking. I had to shift from this fast paced, take everything on and learn to just go with the flow or go with the float as we say. Um, so yeah, it wasn't love at first float. I'll talk about that in a bit. And I mean, as glamorous as you can see that owning a float center is, it's a lot of cleaning. Um, my story starts of driving long drives, long stressful drives down Vancouver, to Vancouver to float. And uh, as you probably have known, if you drive the highway, it's not super relaxing. So kind of counterintuitive after a float. So I kind of joked that I opened a float center for my own selfish purposes, but really um, I'm so passionate about it that I wanted to share it with my community. So a lot of people ask me how I did this, but I really think they're asking why. And <laughs> it's a great question, but it's just that it's really helped me along in my journey um, for health and wellness. Um, we see a lot of people come in for so many different reasons, and that's why I love my job. I'm happy what we did and what we brought to, the, brought to the community. So while a lot of people float for the similar reasons to me, um, anxiety, stress, um, they need to rest, relax, and recharge. I love working with people who have PTSD um, because it can be very beneficial. Uh, lots of nerdy studies. Uh, it lowers your cortisol level. It affects your amygdala, the same as um, which is your flight or flight center, the same as Ativan or Lorazepam. Um, but that's not the only reason. So, I mean, I float for that reason, but I also reap a lot of benefits um, that include sleeping better, uh, my immune system's a lot better, I'm in a lot better mood, so that's always nice for people around me. Um, but we see other people coming in for meditation. They're strengthening, their, like I said, their meditation practice. Um, they want to just have me time. Self-care is kind of a buzzword right now. Um, and then we have people who come in for more physical reasons, like chronic pain, um, like fibromyalgia, or muscle recovery. So um, when I work out, you know, it's really good for your muscles. And I like to bring as many people as I can to our center to see what they get out of it. Because every time someone floats, sometimes it's different, and I learn a little something more about it as well. Um, for me, Besides floating, I had to shift a lot of other thinking in terms of slowing down and what that actually looks like. So my first float, like I said, it wasn't love at first float. Um, I found it really difficult to relax and de-stress and just actually be alone with my thoughts is what people say. 
And that's why we have 90 minute sessions because my first float, I'll tell you a little secret, I almost got out a couple of times because I felt like my brain was a bunch of messy file folders and by floating, they were kind of getting arranged. And that doesn't sound very relaxing, does it? Um, but I pushed through and about halfway through my session, I mean, you can't really tell the time, but I was assuming it was about that. It just stopped. The file folder, the file folder stopped and I just let go, I guess. And the time went by really quickly, and the music came on, which signals that your session's over, and I couldn't believe it. And I just felt lighter, and I felt like work had been done. So I didn't immediately go and open a float center. It wasn't until about a year later that I started feeling really stressed and just not living my true purpose. And um, that's when I started looking into maybe opening my own float center and what that would entail. It seemed like a total dream and that I wouldn't actually get done, but I started asking around. And if you know Chilliwack, um, it's a bit of a small town still, uh, word got out and I heard actually that a float center was opening and I was like, no, that was my idea. Um, then I found out that it was actually my float center. And so I was like, okay, this is a good idea. And there's no looking back. We just celebrated our um, third year float anniversary, as we call it. And I'm excited that I'm able to share this with other people. We offer tandem floats. Uh, those are twin triathlete girls uh, who float for visualization and for athletic recovery. Uh, you can float with your partner. Uh, I just had a uh, baby two months ago and I really enjoyed floating pregnant. Um, some people say floating is very womb-like. Uh, I called it womb inception because it's very like in utero, very calm, very safe. And I just floated a couple days ago because <laughs> I was like, hmm, what is floating good for? It helps me rest, um, relax, find my calm, find my center. And uh, gratuitous uh, baby photo coming up. Um, I hadn't had a chance to float in a while. And I normally try to every two weeks or so, which kind of helps keep me um, level. And I hadn't. so. I floated before I was pregnant, floated while I was pregnant, I floated just a couple days ago because fl floating for me has really helped reduce a lot of the stresses and right now I think there's a lot going on that could be stressful. So it calms your nerves, which doesn't actually seem like it's happening right now, but it does even if you are public speaking like I am right now. So if I were to leave you with one thing is Talk to me a little bit more about floating. If you're a little bit worried, I was too, and I'd love to share it with you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.